What's up, it's EJ Spark, and today I am reviewing what could possibly be the most crucial album review of my young YouTube career. Today I'm reviewing Ariana Grande's Positions album. Now, I am not an avid Ariana Grande listener. I think she's an extremely talented artist, so I was really excited to hear that she was dropping an album, and I really wanted to listen to it thoroughly today and give it a review, and I listened to it thoroughly today, so here comes the review. As always, I'm going to go song by song, and at the end, I'll give you my overall thoughts. So going into this album, I didn't really know what I was expecting, but when the first song, Shut Up, came on, um, you know, it really pulled me in. I'm a sucker for simple songs, so when the song came on and it had the strings, I'm also a sucker for strings, by the way, um, it automatically pulled me in. There were no drums, which I just love a good, simple song with strings, no drums, and you know, the, the the plucking of the strings is fantastic and the chords. It's just a lovely, beautiful song, to be honest. Right off the bat, I kind of noticed this like bad bitch attitude that I'm always here for from Ariana. So I automatically know, you know, the bad bitches are going to love this album. Uh, I enjoyed this song and, you know, it kept my interest to keep listening to the album. So good start. The second song is 34 plus 35, which if you add that up. Nice. So at this point, I'm kind of noticing it's definitely going to be a very um, sexually charged album, if I may. And once again, you have these strings, which I'm noticing that's, you know, a consistent production because I heard the Positions uh, single and that was very stringy as well. So I love that. Uh, this song, you know, provided a sexy, fun feel. So I was having fun with it. It's upbeat. And I noticed myself bobbing my head and jamming out to it, which I honestly didn't think I would be doing on this album, but I was definitely jamming to it. It's a fun song, and, you know, after two tracks, it's a good sign for Ariana. Number three, we have our first feature with Doja Cat with the song Motive, and when this beat dropped, I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like, we're gonna really have a fun song that I can, like, dance to and dance on a dance floor to, and it definitely had an 80s vibe, which, obviously, Doja Cat is, uh, you know, very into right now. But Doja Cat provided a very good feature. You know, I don't really listen to Doja Cat that much either, but I think, she, you know, she provided a well-done feature. She did a very good song, very good job with the song. Uh, not too generic on this track, and the lyrical content was on point. You know, I really liked this track because it was a little more like old-school 80s feel, and it wasn't just super, super mainstream and generic, which I hadn't heard from this album yet, so... After three tracks, really liking this album so far. The next song on this album is just like Magic, and this was honestly uh, like the first super mainstream and generic song on the album. Definitely one of the most like bad bitch tracks on the album, but besides like that lyrical t content, it was definitely sonically a little slower, a lot more generic, kind of like a song where I was like, oh, I've, I've kind of heard this before, I think. So definitely one of the first tracks that lulled me away from the rest of the album. But then we bring it right back on Off the Table with The Weeknd. And now when that kick drum and the drumstick hits uh, come in, I was like, yo, this song is going to be real smooth and real sexy, especially with The Weeknd. I mean, everyone knows... The Weeknd is a great artist, and, and Ariana and The Weeknd's vocals mesh really well because they're both really velvety smooth, and I was right. It was a great track, very slick, sexy vocals on it. Production was on key, and I think, do I think The Weeknd steals the track? Maybe. I mean, The Weeknd was so good on this track. I don't really have anything bad to say about this song. It was four minutes, which might be a little long for some people, but other than that, it kind of reminded me of Chris Brown's Fortune album, to be honest. Like, like 2012 and Biggest Fan, it was definitely like a super sexy, slower song like that, so... Good song. Track six was 6.30. Um, back to the fun tracks, you know, just kind of like a middle of the road track in my opinion on the album. I think the production was fun and bouncy on it. Ariana's vocals are a little more R&B-ish, I think for like the bounciness of the track, but it works just fine. Number seven, another slower song with Safety Net with Ty Dolla Sign. Um, as I reviewed last week a Ty Dolla Sign song, I think he's a very underrated artist because I think his vocals are so good. I think he's, I think he's an underrated singer no doubt and I think the vocals he provides for this track will continue just to be overlooked and overrated and even overshadowed by Ariana Grande's uh, vocals on this I love Ty here I think Ty Dolla Sign honestly deserves more credit for his artistic abilities a uh, bit of a slower song but I really appreciate it uh, for what it does which is being sexy track eight is my hair and oh my gosh I absolutely love this track 
you know, when those chords come in, it's definitely a little jazzy. I think this is my favorite song on the album, by the way. But damn, this is a good song. Starts off with those guitar chords, like I said. Ariana provides some of the best melodies on this track throughout the whole album. Really love this song. You can really feel what she's saying. I feel like she puts a lot of emotion in this song. Um, they add that trumpet to it, and I love jazz. So getting that getting that jazzy feel, it's definitely a warmer feel with this song. It's sexy, emotional, great song for right in the smack dab middle of this album. The next track is Nasty, and it, when it started out with that like heavy bass and like 808s drums, I thought this was going to be uh, Ariana Grande's like version of WAP, which... Kind of was, kind of wasn't, depending on how you look at it. The bass line in the song, definitely bouncy like WAP. Um, definitely a sex song. A lot more slower. Uh, not something I would listen to if I wasn't doing the dirty, but respect. I think it's pretty decent song. The next track is West Side, and this song was cool. Didn't really do too much for me personally. I don't think it was like the best song on the album or anything. And the production was okay. I think her lyrical content on this track is is the thing that stands out, if anything. Number 11 is Love Language, and she comes back real strong with this song. Uh, the song was pretty comforting to me, it felt like. I don't know why, but it just had a nice, smooth feel to it. A uh, little more jazzy, like my hair, so I'm into it. I dig this one. I think she speaks profoundly on it. Uh, the beat is pretty solid, and I love those little strings going back and forth in this song. Track 12 was Positions, and we already heard the single. This was the lead single. Obviously, great song to be the lead single. Uh, very fun, kind of like in a universal song that everyone would enjoy. Uh, you know, love the song, love the crickets in there. I just love the sound of crickets, so that was a really cool addition to the track. Uh, the strings, the plucking, awesome. The song is just on point. Track 13 is obvious. This song is straight sex, and it's great. Track 14 is POV, and this song wraps up the entire album, and with POV, I'm thinking, like, definitely sexiest song on the album. Don't necessarily think it was the sexiest song on the album, but she wraps up the album with a very solid effort. The production on this song flows well. Great ending to the album, and she gives us some of her best vocals on this track. I think she wraps up the album very well. I don't think it was, you know, ended off too high or too low. She ended off right in the middle, just right. Great lyrical content. So my overall thoughts for this album, uh, you know, it's a highly sexually charged album. Didn't know that that was going to be the case going into it, but I like you know, those kinds of albums, especially when you're in that mood. Uh, you know, I think it contains like a keen aesthetic of Ariana Grande as a person and her growth. Uh, not only is it sexy, but like I said before, she provides that bad bitch attitude uh, that everyone loves. And, you know, it provides that egotistical feel that people like in a good way, you know, when listening to bad bitch music. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised to find those fun, upbeat songs in Motive and My Hair, especially amidst like the pop and slower R&B sexy feel of the album. Um, but yeah, glad I could dance those songs. Ariana's vocals are velvety smooth as always. I mean, she's just a very talented singer and you can't deny that. Uh, she, pr pr she provides an extreme amount of harmonies, which I think is good in a lot of cases, but it might feel a little bit overproduced and kind of plastic for like the anti-mainstream music fans, which... Don't know what to make of those fans, but if you aren't into like the sexy pop, slower R&B music, with the exception of a few songs, the album might not be for you. And aside from like a couple of those songs that kind of, you know, lulled me away from the rest of the album, I think it was a very good album. I think Ariana comes at us with uh, great smooth vocals and you can't deny like the strong lyrical content she has in this. So production pretty good. And overall, I'm going to give it a 7.9 out of 10. And the music's great and it's fun. Uh, it's just not something I would listen to like if I wasn't in like that sexy mood. Not something I, I could listen to like at all times of the day. You know, I, I would have to be in like, you know, that certain sexy mood, sexy fun going out type of mood. So, you know, this album is for sex and fun. And so she did a pretty great job with it. And that's my overall thoughts. I want to know what you think of the album, Ariana fans. You know, once again, I'm not an avid Ariana Grande listener, but for the fact that I thoroughly enjoyed this album, I think really says something. I think she did a great overall job. So let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Hit a like for the video. I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 300 subs by the end of the year, and I'm so very close. You can help me out with that. 
And, you know, as always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EJSpark1. Listen to my music on all streaming platforms. And as always, how I leave you out, it's peace, love, I love s'mores, EJ, out.